In this video, we're going to have a look at adding audio to your game. The first part of the video will be an introduction to audio in Unity. We'll be setting up an audio listener and adjusting some audio source components to add sounds. And then in the second part of the video, I'll show you how to make an audio manager. The audio manager makes it really quick and easy to add new sounds and play them through script. I'll have a link where you can download it in the description. But to those of you who are interested in how you can program the audio source component, we'll go through and make an audio manager from scratch. All right, let's get started. So as you can see, I have a project open. This is Shrinking Planet. It's it's my newest Ludum Dare submission and I've gone ahead and stripped it from all the audio. So when we play the game now, it should be totally silent. So let's add some sounds. The first thing we need when adding audio to our game is an audio listener. The most common place for this is the camera. If you select your main camera, you will probably see an audio listener there already. If not, you can always just go and add it by hitting add component and searching for audio listener. All this component does is well, listen for sounds. That also means that the game object that you put your audio listener on will be the place from where you hear sounds in 3D. That's why it's most commonly put on the camera. The next thing we need is an audio source. If we go to any game object in our scene, I'm just going to select the player. We can go ahead and add a new component and let's add the audio source. This component is responsible for playing an audio clip. And that's also the first thing we have to specify. I've gone ahead and imported a few audio clips. Unity supports most file formats. All of these are in MP3. If we click on any of them, a few settings will appear. You can squeeze some performance out of your audio by messing around with these. I'll have a link in the description if you want to read more about that. And if we go ahead and hit play, we can have a listen. So let's now select our player and drag in the car sound. By default, our audio source is set to play on awake. So if we now hit play, we should actually hear the sound. Awesome. We have a bunch of ways we can configure this. Most important is the volume of our sound and the spatial blend. This controls whether or not you want your sound to be played in 2D or 3D space. If you select 2D, it will always be played with the same volume in both speakers. However, if we slide it towards 3D, the volume of the sound is going to depend on how close our audio listener is to the audio source. And it's also going to factor in stuff like the Doppler effect, where sounds moving towards you are more high frequent and sounds moving away get pitched down. So let's try and set this to 3D and have a listen. I think that's a lot better for our game. Finally, this sound should be looping. And so I'm going to check off loop. Now in my game, I have meteors that crash down upon the planet. And when they hit the planet, I want them to make an explosion sound. Luckily, I have it set up in such a way that every time a meteor hits the ground, it's going to spawn a crater object. And so we can simply go ahead and find the prefab for this crater, add an audio source. And I have a sound set up for this. That's the meteor hit. It sounds like this. <laughs> So we can simply drag that in, make sure it's set to play on awake. And here we're using the fact that play on awake means that the audio will play as soon as the object gets spawned in. So if it's enabled right when the scene starts, it's going to play right away. But if it's spawned in at a later point, it's going to play at that point. And we definitely want this to be in 3D space, but we might go for something like 0.8. If we now hit play and wait for a meteor to come crashing, we can hear the impact. So you should now be able to go through and add audio sources to many of your game objects. I've gone ahead and added one to the meteor as well. This much like the car is set to play on awake and is set to loop. And it's just the sound of the meteor flying through air. And so without any coding, we've actually added a bunch of different sounds to our game. However, some sounds aren't tied to a particular game object. An example of this could be the click sound you hear when you hover over a button, or the game over voice you hear when your player dies, as well as of course, music. There's a bunch of different ways to go about this. You could go in and add a bunch of empty game objects with an audio source on each and then through script access that component and call dot play when necessary. But I don't think that's very clean. So I've come up with a simple audio manager that I use all the time. I'm of course going to have a link to it in the description in case you don't want to code it for yourself. But in case you're interested, here's how it's done. So first let's go and create an empty game object. Let's reset the transform and let's call this one audio manager. Let's drag the game object to the top so we can all see it. Let's then hit add component and we want to add a component called audio manager. It's going to be of type C sharp and let's hit create an ad. Let's double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. In the top here we can now delete the two using tags and instead write using unity engine dot audio. Many of the new audio features in Unity are now wrapped inside of this namespace. So it's a good idea to include it whenever you're working with sound. Now, the main idea for this audio manager is to have a list of sounds where we can easily add or remove sounds as we go. And each sound has some different properties. It has an audio clip, a volume and pitch setting, the possibility to loop, and you can add stuff like volume and pitch randomness or spatial blend. Then when we start the game, we go through the list and for each item, we add an audio source with the appropriate settings. Then when we want to play a sound, 
sound, we simply call a play method on the audio manager where we input the name of the sound that we want to play and the audio manager is then going to find the source with that name and play the sound. This makes everything so easy to use. So first we need a list of sounds, but we want to control what data is stored in each sound. And so let's go ahead and create a custom class called sound. To do that, we go inside of Unity, we go to the project and hit create C sharp script, and let's call this one sound. We then double click it, hit reload all. And in here, we again want to be using Unity engine dot audio. We also don't want this to derive from mono behavior and we want to delete the two methods. The first thing we want is a reference to our audio clip. So let's write public audio clip, and let's call it clip. We also want a volume. Let's write public float volume and a pitch public float pitch. Now we'll be adding some more to this as we go, but this is the base of our sound class. So if we save this, we can now go into the audio manager and in here we create a public sound array and let's call it sounds. Now when we save that, and go into Unity and have a look under the audio manager, we would expect a list to appear. However, it does not. The reason why is that whenever we create a custom class and we want this class to appear in the inspector, we have to mark it as serializable. So right above the class, we make two square brackets and we write system.serializable. Now when we save and head into Unity, we can see that we have a list of sounds. Let's add an element. And the first element here has a clip, a volume and a pitch. Now we can definitely make this more interesting. First off, let's go ahead and add a name. We'll make this a public string name. And we can also add sliders to our volume and pitch. To do that, we use the range attribute where we input a minimum and maximum value. We want our volume to go between zero and one. And we might want our pitch to go between 0.1 and three. If we now save and go into Unity, we can see it looks much better. Let's name this first element player death. And I'm gonna drag in my player death sound. Now in our audio manager, whenever we start the game, we want to loop through our list and for each sound, add an audio source. Let's do this inside of the awake method. Awake is pretty much the same as the start method, except it's called right before. So we set up everything in our awake method so that we can play sounds in the start. To loop through our sounds, we go for each sound and we'll call the sound that we're currently looking at S in our sounds array, we want to go ahead and add an audio source component. We could do that on our current object or on a child object. For the sake of simplicity, let's just do it on the current object. So we'll go game object dot add component. And the component we want to add is the audio source. And of course we want to store this audio source in a variable so that later when we want to play the sound, we can call the play method on the audio source. The simplest way to do this is go into our sound class and add a public audio source and let's call it source. Of course, we don't want this to show up in the inspector because it's a value that we populate automatically in the awake method. And so we can mark this with an attribute called hide in inspector. So now even though the variable is public, it won't show. Let's save that, go into the audio manager. And now we can set S, meaning the sound that we're currently looking at, dot source equal to that new audio source component. And so we can set S dot source dot clip, meaning the clip of our audio source, equal to s.clip. And if we want to control our volume and pitch as well, we can set s.source.volume equal to s.volume and s.source.pitch equal to s.pitch. So if we save this now and head into Unity and hit play, we can see that at the start of our game, an audio source gets added for each sound in our sounds array and that the clip, the volume, and the pitch all get copied over. So let's exit play mode and let's add a way to play this sound. To do that, we create a new method. Let's make this instead of the update method. And this one is going to be public because we want to be able to call this method from outside the class. Let's call it play and it's going to take in a string with the name of our sound. Then all we have to do is loop through all of our sounds and find the sound with the appropriate name. We could do that by creating another for each method and checking the name for each element. Or we could go up here and say using system and this now allows us to find a sound by going array dot find we want to find the sound in the sounds array and we want to find the sound where sound dot name is equal to the name now this type of syntax might be a bit new to you but it allows us to write code a whole lot faster we then store the sound that we found in a variable called s and finally we can go s dot source dot play of course, this is going to throw an error if you don't find a sound with the appropriate name. We'll have a look at that in a second. So now our audio manager should actually work. We have a way of defining the sounds that we want. We set up audio sources for each sound when we play the game. 
and we have a method that we can call whenever we want to play a certain sound. So now we can find the place in our code where we want our player to die. Let's go into player, and here I have a script called player collision. Under this on collision enter function, I check if what we hit was a meteor, and if it was, we want to go ahead and end the game and destroy the current game object. This is also where we want to play our sound. Of course, we need a reference to our audio manager. We could create a variable up here and reference it in the inspector, or since this is only going to be called a few times, we could use find object of type, and the type that we want to search for is audio manager. We then call dot play, and then the name of the sound that we want to play. In our case, that's player death. So now with a single line of code that we could put anywhere in any of our scripts, we can play a sound of our choosing. And so we should hear that when we hit play, and if I manage to collide with something, our player blows up. Now we can quickly expand on this to add some music. Let's add another element to our array. Let's call this one the theme. And I'm going to drag in my main theme here. Let's set the volume to something a bit lower and make sure the pitch is set to one. And we can play this from anywhere, but let's just play it from within our audio manager. So let's add a void start method. And here we simply call play. And the sound that we want to play is theme. So now when we hit play, we can hear the music playing. Of course, we want our main theme to loop. To add this option, we go into our sound class and we add a public ball called loop. Then inside of our audio manager, where we set up our different sounds, we go s.source.loop equals s.loop. And now we have an option for looping. Let's go ahead and enable that. And when we now play, we can see that our main theme is set to loop. Let's see what happens if we make a typo. Say if we accidentally put a Q at the end of theme. This happens more often than you think. If we now hit play, it's going to try and play a sound that isn't there. So we get a null reference exception. To get around this, we simply check if S is equal to null, and if it is, we return. And so we don't try playing a sound that isn't there. Now when we hit play, even though the name is still spelled wrong, nothing happens. And we can even go in here and add a tiny error message for ourselves. So now I'm just throwing out a warning saying that the sound with this name wasn't found. And now we pretty much can't break it. Let's change the name back here. Let's have a look at what happens if we add this to multiple scenes. The easiest way to do this is make a prefab out of the audio manager, then open up the other scene, in our case the menu, and drag the audio manager back in. The problem with this, however, is that if we hit play and transition to another scene, our music gets cut off. And we don't want our music to restart every time we change a scene. We want our sounds to be unaffected. To change this, we make the audio manager persist between scenes. Let's go into Visual Studio. Let's go to the top under our awake method. Let's add some lines. And all we need to do is call the don't destroy unload method. And as the target, we put our own game object. Now this also means that if we currently hit play and transition to a new scene, we actually have two audio managers in here. The one from the first scene and the one from the second. Now that's of course not something we want. So to get around this, we create a public static audio manager and we'll call this instance. This is a static reference to the current instance of our audio manager that we have in our scene. And we want to make sure that there's only one instance. So we simply go in here and check if instance is equal to null, meaning that we don't have an audio manager in our scene. Well, then we set instance equal to this object. If not, meaning that we already have an instance in our scene, we want to remove this object, destroy game object. And just to make sure that no more code is called before we destroy the object, we also hit return. Now, depending on whether or not you've worked with singleton patterns before, that might be a bit confusing to you, but just know that now when we hit play, our audio manager is set under the don't destroy and load scene, we hit play, and there's still only one audio manager. And you can hear that our music simply continues. So that's it for our audio manager. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in April. And a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Callahan, Cyborg Mummy, Cole Cabral and Jason the Tito. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash brackies.